All right, hello everybody. We're gonna do an example problem here for lateral wood bracing of a concrete wall form. Um, we're going to go ahead and start by reading off this problem statement. Here is the setup. We're designing the lateral wood bracing for an eight foot tall concrete wall. Bracing is gonna be two by four Douglas fir larch attached at a height of five feet above the form bottom anchored four feet away from the base of the form. We're going to use the allowable stresses in the table in this document here uh, to find uh, adjusted with the seven day load where our design wind load is 25 pounds per square foot. So basically we got to find out where do we start this problem. So step one that we are going to here, if I can get my pen going, there it goes, we're, oops, okay, there we go, step one, all right, so one, Oops. we're going to find, actually, before we do any of this, let's just get organized, let's get the information that we're going to need. Um, let's get the wood properties. So let's go ahead and just get FC, FT, so the compressive stress, the tensile stress, max stress, and E. Let's go find those real quick. Okay, so let's go to this table. It's pretty far down here in the document. Right here. Here's our table. Uh, this is the allowable stress for lumber, table nine. So we've got uh, Douglas for larch, the problem statement said, FC is 1,000, FT is 850, E is 1.7 times 10 to the six. The other thing that is good to know, let me get it to get on the screen here, is down here, Down here we have the load duration factors for a seven day load. Since these are temporary, um, you can bump up these values. You can see we got 1.25, 1.25 for C and FT, and one for E. All right, so let's go ahead and put those all in here. Um, so it was 1,000, it was 850, and it was 1.7 times 10 to the 6. Now we're going to multiply both of these by 1.25 and this one by 1.0 for the load duration factor. So we finally get 1250 PSI. We get 1062 PSI and we get the same. 1.7 times 10 to the 6 PSI. Okay, so now that we have that, let's jump into step one. So we're going to find in the uh, design lateral force. I realize this actually might be a little high. So the design lateral force is H, capital H. And that comes from your table. Here, table three. So this is lateral design loads for wall forms. We have an eight foot wall that's less than 22. So it's either 100 or it's H times WF over two, where WF is the wind force. So we're gonna punch that in. So it's H times WF over two or 100. So let's see what this is. H is eight, WF is 25 from the problem, divided by two. This actually happens to be 200 divided by two equals 100. So 100 or 100, so we're good there. We're gonna use 100 pounds per foot. That's capital H. All right, step two. So we're going to find the strut length. And 
that's called L. And it, it should be pretty easy for you to recognize that uh, it's going to be, if you have this situation here, this is your straight line, and you know that this is 4, this is 5, you can find L here. This they call H prime, this they call L prime, H is the total height. Okay, so that's just for nomenclature. So the equation here is H prime plus, sorry, this is squared, L prime squared, and you're going to take the square root. So plug those in, a 5 squared plus 4 squared square root, you get 6.4 is L. That's this. 6.4. Okay, so step three. We're going to find the load per strut. And there's an equation for that. The uh, variable I use is P prime. You can see right here it's capital H times H times L over H prime, L prime. So some of these letters they use aren't necessarily very handy, but it is what it is. So P prime equals capital H times lowercase h times L divided by H prime times L prime. So capital H is actually this design lateral force, which is 100 pounds per foot And then we're going to multiply that by h, which happens to be 8, which is the actual wall height here, and l, which we just found was 6.4. We're going to divide all that by h prime, l prime, which is 5 times 4, and we get p prime equals 256 pounds per foot. All right, now we have that. Go to step 4. We're going to check for buckling. And that has two parts to it. First part is just checking the slenderness, L over D ratio. And here, L, of course, is 6.4. That's feet. And D is 1.5. And that's in inches. That's a 2 by 4 is nominal, or actual. Uh, thickness there. So we need to convert this. We're going to take uh, 12 inches per one foot and we end up with 51.2. And that is not good. That needs to be less than 50, but it's greater than 50. So not okay. Okay, so what can we do? we can brace it. So if we put a brace here at the mid-span, that decreases the unsupported length of this in half. So instead of being 6.4 in our slenderness ratio, we use 3.2. So now our new L over D, I'll put it here, use mid-span brace. Okay, so our new L over D is going to be no longer 6.4, but 3.2, multiplied by 12 inches per foot, divided by 1.5 inches, and we get half of what it was, or 25.6, which is less than 50, so we're okay. So we can use one mid-span brace and be okay. So now for buckling, now that we've checked uh, slenderness, let's actually check what the max capacity of this member is in buckling. So that is this value, Fc prime, which going here is this equation here, this 0.3e slenderness ratio squared. So we use that equation, 0.3e divided by L over D squared, and we get 0.3 times our E, which is up here, 1.7 times 10 to the 6 divided by our new L over D, which is 25.6 squared, since this is braced. And we get 700 
78.2 psi. Okay, and so that's that's basically our max um, that this can withstand for buckling. All right. So let's compare this to our other values. Fc is 1250. Ft is 1062. And one other thing we can even look at here, um, if I go back to here, and go pretty much all the way to the bottom, um, we can, yeah, actually I already wrote it down. So we, we just compare all of these. We've got 1250 is F sub C. So that's just compression where it would fail in compression, not buckling due to compression. And FT where it would fail in tension is 1062. So this one is obviously, oops, governs. So buckling here, and it usually will govern our design. So what are we, what's our next step? We need to find the compressive force that's actually acting on this member. Okay, so we know that um, you know stress is equal to force over area, or the force is equal to the stress times the area. In these terms, though, we end up with P which is the actual force, equals F times the area. So F is what we found up here. This Fc prime is going to be our stress, our maximum stress that we just found due to buckling. And we're going to have to use that to find what the max force is on here. And working again. Yeah, anyway. So just plug in this value right here, 778.2 times our cross sectional area of a 2 by 4, which is 1.5. It's an inch and a half. Oops. Inch and a half by three and a half. And punching that area in there, we end up with a force of 408 5.5 pounds. Okay, so that's the actual force that is acting on our, um, our member or the maximum allowable force. Okay, so now the last step, six, is to find the spacing. And our spacing, S, is going to be this maximum force that we found, P, over this P prime that we had found up here which is the actual loading per foot, P prime. So that gives us 4085.5 pounds divided by 256 pounds per foot. We end up with 15.96, or we'll just round that to 16 feet. So basically you have capacity divided by the actual um, loading on the entire wall per foot and you find out where you need to space your uh, supports. So there's our answer, 16 feet, and that's it. Thank you very much.